Hey guys, welcome along tonight to our Torpedo 7 Club Live workshop. Uh, we're here at Torpedo 7 Westgate and we're here to talk to you about epic bike upgrades. Uh, I'm Cullen, I'm the bike services lead here at Westgate and I've been riding bikes my whole life, it's what I do and I love it. Um, I brought my friend Doug along tonight. Hi guys, I'm Doug, I'm from the Albany store. I've been riding bikes my whole life as well, which is a lot longer than Cullen. <laughs> and uh, I love the upgrades, so let's get into it and talk about them. It depends what you want from the bike. If you're wanting a more comfort ride, maybe you could look at a saddle and grips. If you're wanting a more performance driven, maybe we could look at better tires. Maybe we could look at, you know, going to a higher quality drivetrain, switching it from, if you've got the latest one from a 10 by, you could go to an 11 by or something. But yeah, it all depends. I mean, going to your local store, they'll be able to kind of steer you in the right direction. Um, but yeah, it all depends comfort, performance. If you just want it to look cool, go buy some really flash looking stuff. There's a lot out there. Doug, where would you start? When you bought your first bike, where did you go? Well, I'd probably go drivetrain. And, and these days you can do something as little as add the, you can add more poles to your free hub body. So you get more engagement in the free hub body. It's a really simple thing to do. And it really irritates your partners or your <laughs> mates when you're riding with them. It's super loud, it sounds great. So drivetrain is one of my first go-to spots. So when we're talking about the drivetrain, we're talking about cassette, derailleur, chain ring, chain, that's all the components and make it up. I myself would always go for kind of a derailleur upgrade eventually, derailleur and a shifter, means you're gonna get more reliable shifting, quicker shifting. On this bike here, we've got the brand new SRAM GX axis on it, um, which is awesome, it's wireless shifting. It is definitely the cream of the crop um, and it's really good, but at a really good price point. Yeah, so single speed's kind of the new standard and it's coming out a lot more common on all the full sus bikes that are out there. Um, some of the higher end hardtails coming with it. Um, again, it comes down to what you like and what's gonna suit best. Is it SRAM, is it Shimano? It's all down to what you like. Um, I've got bikes with SRAM on it, but then I've got Shimano brakes on my bikes. So again, it's up to that. What, what do you think, Doug? Just... Yeah, it, going to a one by drivetrain is definitely the way to go, but you have to marry up, you have to weigh up whether or not it's gonna be worth it because it might be so expensive on your older bike that you might put that money towards a new bike and it already comes with a one by drivetrain and everything else that you want as well. So um, yeah, you're best to kind of have a look at what that cost is gonna be for that whole new drivetrain. Yeah. I mean, going from the drivetrain is kind of the starting point. You kind of matching that up with your brakes. Um, brake pads, brake rotors, brake sets, it all comes down to it. Um, the, the cool thing about upgrading your brakes is it typically, weirdly enough, makes you go faster. You get extra confidence from it, which puts you just faster down the track and you're good to go. I thought brakes just slow you down. Yeah, well, you'd think, but I mean, 90% of the time when you upgrade your brakes, you'll be beating your Strava times. Um, what are some things you can do to upgrade your brakes? Oh, definitely bigger rotors. Um, depending on the bike, some bikes like this with a heavy motor and battery, they already come with a pretty big rotor. But if you've got a bike that's got a 160 or a 180 rotor, stick a 203 on there with an adapter and straight away you've got better braking then. It's all, again, depends what you've existing kind of brake setters. Um, a lot of the time going from like a two piston brake caliper to a four piston brake caliper is instantly gonna make a big difference in your brake stopping. Um, so you could look at doing, you know, new calipers, new levers, otherwise starting with rotors and, you know, making sure you got the right kind of pad for where and what you're riding um, is gonna be the slightly cheaper way. But if you are wanting the best performance and best driven kind of bike, definitely look at doing levers and calipers as well. Over braking is essentially, it kind of could mean if you're putting, if you've got like a cross country trail bike and you're chucking enduro style brakes in it, so you're chucking Saints on a giant Anthem or something like that, it's pretty overkill. That means you're gonna stop. Um, a lot of people are doing it nowadays just because it's becoming a lot more accessible and easy to do um, and it's gonna make you stop. So kind of why not in a way. And you can, essentially break it down to where you're only breaking with one finger instead of two so uh, you can reduce the amount of power that you need to stop your bike and so i think that's probably where most people are going yeah i i tend to run uh, metal because i'm a little bit bigger guy but um, they last longer and they do well for me i don't have any problem with the braking with the metal pad they're a little bit noisier a little bit hissy sounding but they work really well and they just last longer how about yourself yeah, I mean, I'm a metal guy as well, but resin's pretty good if you're drying, what, riding in drier conditions, because, um, you know, there's no water to seep through them. Um, whereas, 
you know, the middle ones are a bit longer lasting, but Rizm's nice and quiet. So sometimes it's good summer run Rizm pads. Piddles, there's lots of styles. Do you go for a platform pedal or a clipless pedal? Um, we've got a couple of options. Um, again, there's different sizes. If you've got bigger feet and you're not wanting to get a clipless pedal, go for an awesome big kind of platform. This is the one up composite pedal. So when I say composite, it's also talking about the material it's made of. So this is the Shimano GR500 aluminium pedal. Really nice, good and strong. This is the one up composite, really good. Bit lighter because it's composite, but kind of not as strong as a metal pedal, but still you can ride these for days and you won't go anywhere. And, and just real quickly, on some pedals as this one, you can adjust the height of the pins. So if you're somebody that doesn't want a whole lot of pins sticking out there that can do damage to the leg, then you can reduce the amount that sticks out. And then we go to the old guy pedal like myself, the old clipless pedal. It's fantastic if you like to be locked in. This is a lighter weight version. There's not much there. So if you're riding with flat shoes, it's not going to do the trick for you. But if you're a clipless guy and you ride clipped in, this is the way to go. Why do you ride clipless versus a platform? Well, for me, I, uh, it's probably anxiety. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm going to bounce off the pedals on these. Yep. And with this, I feel secure. I'm locked in and I'm ready for the hill when I hit it as well. You know, next on the bike, that's a really key, kind of almost the biggest innovation in bikes in the last kind of 10 years is a dropper post. Um, if you've not seen one before, you can adjust your seat without having to mess around, hold it to your hip, play like that. You've got it all set up ready. Um, basically, makes going downhill easy. You just sit on it, get it out of the way, and then you're nice and free. Going uphill, press of a button, you got it back up. So it can be challenging as far as the height that you need to reach with the dropper because they do hit parts of the frame. So where there's points on the frame that will stop the post going in all the way, means that we sometimes have to get a seat post that is very, very short. Um, the other way that it's a problem is if you can't internally route a seat post. Um, so Colin, you want to take that? Yeah, so when we're talking about internally routing, all the droppers are either cable actuated or kind of hydraulic actuated, essentially. Um, that means there's going to be something at the bottom that needs to pull it or push it to get that release. Um, if you can't internally route a dropper, you're going to have to look at an externally routed dropper, which will have that kind of over here. Um, easiest way to kind of find out is have a look if you've got little kind of spare grommets on your frame somewhere that's going to line up. Um, most kind of bikes over a thousand dollars that are modern does have that kind of setup. Um, but then there are still a whole bunch of bikes out there that you can't guarantee. Yeah. Um, again, easy way, bring it in to us. Come ask we us. can have a look. We've got mechanics, we have bike guys in all our stores who will be able to tell you what the best dropper is, how to fit it, and get you all sorted there. But once you've got the perfect dropper for your bike, pair it up with a saddle. <laughs> um, saddle is one of those really important upgrades. It's a comfort upgrade. Um, if you don't have the right saddle for you, you're probably going to come in the store and say, hey, I'm really sore down there. It's not what I want. What are you going to do about it? We've got a couple of different options. We've got the Topeak Free SX here, or the Charge Spoon. This one's a little bit more of a kind of comfort and kind of ergonomic saddle. That's really good for kind of getting you sitting right on the saddle and good for your kind of lower back and pressure relief. Whereas the Charge Spoon's just that kind of nice upgrade from a stock standard saddle. Um, nice, lightweight, pressure release in the middle. What's your take? What do yeah, you think? I mean, it already says who it's going to go for. The guy who is hard charging is going to get this saddle for sure. This one's got little elastomers on the back to absorb shock. Comfort up the front. Um, both saddles, if you're going to ride a lot, you're going to need to get some butt butter as well. <laughs> That'll go a long way. <laughs> yeah, it's but not yeah. going to change it overnight, just putting a saddle on, but it's definitely going to get there. Um, still recommend padded biking shorts. And if you need a bit of butt butter to <laughs> get things starting down there. Um, no bike comes with a perfect saddle. They have to be generic about it. So yeah, it's a, a welcome upgrade for most bikes. A lot of standard tires that are coming on bikes nowadays, again, they're getting better. Back in the day, you'd get a pretty kind of cheaper tire that's, you know, there's not much to it. It's pretty much get a tire and go. Whereas nowadays, a lot of bikes are coming with branded tires and then a lot of own manufacturers are coming with much better tires. We've got like the Maxxis Minions here, probably the number one selling tire we have here at Westgate. Awesome upgrade from what your stock standard tire will be, you know. Tubeless ready, they got the XO protection. So again, more puncture protection, 
less likely for it kind of ripping anything like that so again not too expensive you know 110 bucks per tire but something that's going to make a dramatic increase and again you know looks cool and they grip these things rip the corners so they are a lot of fun to put on your bike it makes it feel like an entirely new bike it's a great upgrade well i can cover that because i'm an old cross-country guy so um it, it just climbs better that's that's the main advantage so you're you're reducing that rotating force or that rotating weight and it's going to go uphills a lot better the downside is that the bike will be twitchier it will handle differently now tubeless is um there's a few reasons to get tubeless but the main one is performance it will grip better, especially in the wet, um, and you prevent yourself getting pinch flats, which are a major pain. Um, so it is one of those things, I still carry a spare tube, even though I'm way out in the bush, you could have a problem with your tubeless where you just can't fix it, so you have to do that. Um, you have to sort it out with a tube. But um, tubeless is a reasonably um, easy and cheap way to upgrade your bike. It's probably about $30 per end if you're using an existing tire. And then if you have to buy new tires, then that'll go on top of it. But it's not too bad. As far as the multi-tool goes, there's a lot out there. Um, probably I, I, my best advice is make sure it has a chain tool. The chain tool when you're mountain biking can be the difference between walking for 20K and not. Um, so it is really nice to have. Plus a lot of the tools have a space for the power link to go on the tool so that you have that ready to go as well. Yeah, 100%. I mean, so like the one up EDC light is a really cool one, nice and small, sits in the stereo tube of your fork. You just pop it out, and you've instantly got an access to a whole range of tools just like that. There's different versions of each tool with more and less what you're depending you want. Um, obviously, that relays to the price as well. Um, but both awesome things to have that sit out of the way. It's not like you're having to carry an extra thing in your backpack, an extra thing on your bike. It's all hidden out of the way and it just looks normal. So really kind of inexpensive way to make sure, as Doug said, you're not gonna have to be walking for hours on end. Yeah. They're mostly kind of about, you know, personal preference and comfort. You can get standard grips that are just there for you to hold on to so you don't slip, or you can get a more ergonomic style grip. Um, ergonomic grips are usually a little bit bigger and look a little bit less cool to us kind of mountain bikers out there, but they serve a purpose if you're commuting longer distance you know your hands are going to last a bit better i think one of the key things is that if you are doing things like uh tour out here or something like that you do need an ergonomic grip so don't worry about your mates giving you a hard time <laughs> just put it on there and go <laughs> and getting like a lock grip like these which have basically they bolt on and kind of screw on to your handlebar there's nothing worse than running a grip that over time is just going to get loose you're going to have them start to come off you're in the middle of a ride and then you're having to hold your grip on your bike not much fun um a lot of grips now are coming as lock-on grips, but I would definitely go for one of those. The bars are a really cool one because there's different shapes, different styles. You've got carbon, you've got alloy, and they Why? serve different purposes. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you go carbon over um, alloy? Well, if you, if you want, for me personally, if I want the best, I'm gonna go carbon. Um, carbon is, they can build anything they like and it dampens vibrations better. Um, alloy, they have to shape it and they're only lim they're limited to what they can do with it. These bars flex an incredible amount. They're amazing. You can actually see the slow motion videos online. So they're really cool. They're gonna dampen a lot of vibrations. And everybody says, well, they do break. Alloy bars break as well if you break, if you crash hard enough. So um, that's just, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, 100%. I mean, going with the bars, you've got the stem. Um, stem obviously is the thing that holds the bars to your fork, to your bike. Very kind of essential thing to make sure you've got the right stem for what you like. You can go wide bars with a short stem, really good control. Um, if you prefer, you know, to be a little bit more out and go longer stem, there's tons, you know, you can get different stem rises, lengths. It all comes down to what you like, what you're trying to go for. Um, Cooler upgrade as well. If you're running a 31.8 diameter stem and bar, it's quite a cool upgrade to upgrade the stem and the bar to go to 35 and it'll just give a much more positive steering. Your more entry level suspension forks are just gonna be um, like a coil fork. So you can't adjust it, it's pretty set from the start. You maybe have just the kind of rebound on it, but that's about it. Um, so if you don't have an air fork, that's a really cool kind of place to go with your suspension. Um, means you can adjust it to your weight, to your riding style, your preferences. And a lot of those times going to an air fork is, it's a little bit pricey. Suspension is a big kind of cost of a bike, um, but it is gonna be quite an obvious performance upgrade 
No, you don't have to at all. Um, there's a myriad of brands out there. So you really want to decide what you want to get out of the upgrade and then decide, is it tires, is it grips, is it seat? But you're probably not going to be sticking with the upgrade that you've already got or the gear that you've already got. Yeah. What do you think, Kellen? Yeah, it's totally personal. I mean, like if you ride a Trek bike, but you really like something giant, there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is your mate might laugh at you, but hey, it's up to you and it's about <laughs> what works best for you and what's gonna be most suitable for the situation. So I wouldn't worry about brands whatsoever. You might find some you fall in love with, um, there's a whole lot out there that are really good. In the last 10 years, even the Tekken bikes have changed completely. Um, with all the new sizes and standards out there, if you've got a 10, 15 year old bike that's sat in the garage and you wanna get back out on it, it's gonna be pretty hard and pricey to probably get it back going, which is where as Doug pointed out, it's almost worth coming in, seeing us and getting you a sweet deal on a new bike. Um, you know, sometimes it's, if you're gonna be spending a thousand bucks to upgrade a bike, why not spend 1500 to get a brand new bike, new warranties on all the parts, good to go from there. Yeah, that's all from us tonight. Yeah. So nice. it's been fun and we'll see you guys out there. See Thank you. you out there.